you recently opened up an office in Sydney. Uh, tell us about why you made that decision and how you think Make is going to fit into the community here of architects in Sydney. Okay, well, we, we won a project in, in London, actually, for, for, for Brookfield, um, and out of that came the project for Winyard's Place in Sydney. And then we, it was a competition they held, and we did it with Arch Architectus, mm -hmm. and we won it. So based on that, we set a little office up over here um, mm -hmm. in Architectus offices to start with in our own office. Um, then we started to win more work, so we then won Project Sandstone with uh, Pontiac Land. Um, so, you know, it started a sort of snowball, and there's 16 people here now in Sydney, so it's quite a mm -hmm. substantial commitment. Uh, what was the first time that you visited Sydney? What was your impression of it architecturally? I mean, I've, I came many, many years ago in the 1970s and 80s. Um, <clears throat> it's always been a fantastic place to come. I mean, it, you know, it's just a great pleasure to get off the plane and come into Sydney. It's just uh, it's a really vibrant place. Um, you know, the sun's fantastic, the weather's fantastic, and the Opera House and some of the architecture's great as well. So for me, it's, it's like, it's great. I love it. So Sydney's in the middle of this explosive growth with a yeah. lot of people coming. It seems like the city is changing rapidly. It's going to change more and more. How do you think architects should, what, what role do you think architects play in keeping that character that the city now has as it grows so rapidly? I mean, is it going to change fundamentally? Is design going to contribute to how the city is experienced? And what do you think that makes role might be in that process? I think the challenge of any city is to try and keep the sort of essence of the old um, place, you know, the sense of place. So whether it's in London or whether it's in Sydney or whether it's in Paris, you're basically keeping the, the character that's there originally, that's been built up over many, many years. And then you're taking down some of the ones that don't work and not so good. And our Winyard Place project is that, where we're taking down the old building. Um, and then you build new ones, which you know complement the old ones or contrast with the old ones. And I think that's the sort of nature of a really vibrant city. You think of London, you know, it's really vibrant because it's got the old and the new next to each other. You think of Paris, it tends to be all the older together and all the new have been built somewhere else. And I think that's less of a sort of um, interesting way of doing it. I think Sydney's got the right idea to sort of, you know, to keep focus on the heart and to keep rebuilding that heart until it's, you know, over and over and over again. And that's something that your firm has tried to do with Winyard Place, specifically. Yeah. Tell yeah. us about that project and how you think it fits into what you were just talking about. So I, I think Winyard um, is one where we actually have taken down the building. We've actually looked at the station below, created a brand new concourse, um, brand new platform for people to actually use, as sort of like, a, like an urban garden, like a sort of um, urban room extending the Winyards Park into the building. So it becomes more of a sort of place. And then building a new tower on top of that, which is you know state-of-the-art office, office building. Mm -hmm. And that contrasts with our uh, sandstone projects for Pontiac right down by Circular Quay where we've kept the existing buildings. They're two beautiful sandstone buildings. We've kept them, um, taken them back to their floor, former glory and then refurbished them and then one well, we've extended the roof on. And so you've got sort of, in a way, vineyards and sandstone are the opposite ends of the extreme. One we're keeping the building, one we're knocking it down. And I think that, in a way, is a sort of balance that um, you need to keep in Sydney throughout, as, it, as in any city, to be honest. At Winyard specifically, one of the interesting things about the building is where it meets the ground and how it embraces yeah. the laneways of the city. So tell me about how the building does that and, and why you made that decision. Yeah, I mean, I think the, the site at the moment, um, you can't walk through it. <clears throat> you know, it's blocked. And our idea is to walk through it. So you go from George Street to Carrington Street. It's a change of level, but you actually use that change of level to, to advantage and, and pulling in the streets into the building. And then using the sort of um, the little lane in the middle as well that links through all the way through the sort of north-south in the city as well. And I think those routes are really important. I don't think you want to create buildings that block the routes. routes. You want to keep the building so actually make those routes even even better. So there's better retail, good retail, uh, cafes and shops and things, which actually address those uh, those routes. And I think that's really important for a city. Hmm. And how specifically <coughs> does the building encourage that kind of interaction between the, the street and the building itself? It's completely open. I mean, there's three columns and that's it. You know, the, the base of it is completely open so you can walk straight in. And it's uh, and you link down, down to the station as well, to the, to the platform. And I think what's nice about doing a project like Winyard is you're right in the heart of Sydney. You've got the major railway station which everybody comes in and out of. Um, you know, which at the moment isn't a great experience, to be absolutely honest. Um, and we're going to make it better. And I think that's the great thing about uh, being an architect. You have a chance to make people's lives better by what we do. And I think that's you know, what drives us on all the time, is to make things better and better and better. So what's the next uh, mission then for, for Sydney? Is this something that can be replicated in all of the sites that are being infilled and, and upgraded throughout downtown? Yeah, I mean, I think Sydney's biggest issue is, is transport. Um, as, a, as a whole, I think looking at cycleways, looking at uh, more rail, more trams, you know, I think it suffers from that, you know, the car being a sort of major thing. And, um, and I think in you know, a lot of cities around the world where they've actually gone away from the car, you know, we have congestion charging now in central London, we encourage mm -hmm. people to use public transport. 
and it makes a huge difference. And pollution at the moment is a huge issue in most um, European cities. Um, you know, the, the rising use of diesel um, and petrol cars, you know, hopefully over time that will be replaced, but at the moment it's a real, real problem. So I think, I think Sydney's challenge is to get, get some of that transport sorted mm -hmm. out. And it seems like they're doing that with a couple large mm. rail expansions, the Metro West and, and yep. several others. Um, they're not without their critics. I mean, it's a pretty controversial process of construction and siting and uh, deciding how much to invest and, and where. Um, at large, do you think, what do you think Sydney's main challenges are for the next, let's say, 10 years? I don't think there's a, a problem with keeping the character of Sydney. I mean, I think the character of Sydney is fantastic. You're not going to lose that, mm -hmm. whatever you build, to be honest. Um, I think the transport is the biggest issue. You know, it's taken so long to build the tram down middle of George Street, you know. That, that sort of process needs to be speeded up, I think. And actually, mm -hmm. all those projects you talk about, they should all be speeded up as much as possible. And I think there is a, you know, obviously it's a balance. You don't want to bankrupt yourselves to build this stuff. But at the end of the day, long term, you know, if you think about the London Underground System or the New York subway, you know, they've been around for hundreds of years. And they actually, you know, actually make the city still work today as they did then. And I think it's, you know, that, that level of infrastructure needs to be really thought about. Mm -hmm. What do you think the tall building uh, typology coming out of Sydney today might teach the rest of the world? Is there something about how Sydney's using tall buildings that should be replicated elsewhere? I, mean, I think Sydney's tall buildings, um, probably more than anywhere else in the world, use concrete rather than steel. And mm -hmm. I think that's a major, major step in a way. Because in, in you know, new technology concrete, you've probably heard about it's from better people than me uh, this, in this conference. But I mean, the, the new fantastic concrete, which is really, really strength, the high strength concrete, can actually mean you can go much higher. Um, and in a way, Sydney sort of pioneered the way in that in the last um, sort of 50 years using concrete. Mm -hmm. Whereas New York's all steel, mm -hmm. you know, London's pretty much all steel. So I think that, um, that technology side of, of Australia and the sort of techniques you've got over here will actually transform around, you know, it can be transferred around the world. Mm -hmm. I think in typology terms, um, I think there's been a much bigger move towards mixed use towers. As a, mm -hmm. you know, wherever you look now, there's you know, obviously shopping and offices are you know, always together, shopping and residential. But I think there's going to be more residential offices together, more um, schools in the air, you know, more, more ideas of getting buildings off the ground into, into towers. And that sort of mixed use element, I think, is going to be the future for towers. Hmm. How about design-wise? I mean, we've heard before the obituary of the big glass box, but it yep. seems to me that there, there still are plenty of, of yep. boxy towers. Um, you, yeah. Your work has been kind of apart from that in a lot of cases. How do you think uh, architects should be thinking about the design of, of tall buildings? I think the biggest thing we have to face is, is climate change and, and global warming. And I think we've used the death of the glass box in a way as a sort of metaphor for making buildings much more energy efficient. You know, we're doing buildings with 50% you know, glass or even 35% you know, glass. Um, and you still, you know, you still get the right amount of daylight, you still you know, feel like you're in a sort of glass building. But I think it's putting the glass where it's actually needed. And it's difficult because here you've got the views of the harbour which face straight into the sun. And you've got a real challenge in Sydney to actually get that fantastic view, but not actually overheat the building. And that's the challenge in, in Sydney, which mm -hmm. you know, parts of the other, other parts of the world, we're lucky sometimes the view's the opposite way, we can shade against it. Mm -hmm. But I think that energy side of things is really, really critical. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, uh, you know, if we were, we were campaigning to get you know, more energy efficiency in our buildings, um, to be built more energy efficiently, uh, you know, and to be um, something that's actually gonna last for the future, not actually try and destroy the planet. Do you think it's possible to ever have a net zero skyscraper? I don't think anybody really knows what that means. And we've talked about it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and you can often do lots of offsets. You can build in timber nowadays on mm -hmm. certain, certain heights. I don't think you're quite going to get there. I mean, we're, they're talking about getting there. But I, you know, my skepticism says I think we, maybe not in my lifetime will we get there. But I think that's got to be the aim. You know, we're going for low and low energy use buildings. And I think if we can get to zero, fantastic, all mm -hmm. positive. Mm -hmm. What makes you so skeptical that that could happen? I just think it's um, it's just time, you know. And I think it's also a definition of what you really mean by it, because if you take into account the actual construction, the carbon used in building a building, that obviously that's a huge amount of carbon, mm -hmm. and that's got to be offset as well. And that tends to get sort of, you know, not quite into the equation. The equation is really about running costs um, at the moment, anyway. Mm -hmm. um, we talked about Winyard Place. Are there other projects of yours in Sydney that you that you'd like to mention? Well, obviously, sandstone buildings are great, and we're doing opera residences. Uh, we're doing the fit out of that. Um, the interiors of that, which is great fun. We've got a little hotel in Manly we're looking at. So there's lots of other things going on. We're um, doing interiors in Sydney Park. Um, so we've got a, a wide range of um, wide range of projects. But I think Winyards is our prime project for Brookfield, and it's uh, fantastic. Mm -hmm.